it's it's mind blowing to be fair, just what the guys have undertaken. I've never seen a project like it, to be honest, not on this scale. It's gonna be special, I think, put it that way. So, no pressure. <laughs> There may be a sort of almost semi-permanent smell of weed in the air and you're never more than two minutes away from walking past a lady in a box but there's nothing the people of Amsterdam love more than a bike. One of the most striking things without a doubt is the architecture. It almost looks and feels like that has been built from an entire city kind of high big tall skinny townhouses they all look completely different and unique but it just blends into one big aesthetic that kind of gives the whole city such a really interesting character and feel so I'm standing just now in the NDSM part of Amsterdam and you can see it feels like a kind of like a barren wasteland of old production of yesteryear which means really one thing in all these stories perfect breeding ground for artists to come in and do their thing behind me this massive building is going to be the museum so i'm not going to lie to you january in amsterdam is absolutely freezing why don't we go take a look and see what we can find what just automatically hits you in here is the size of absolutely everything you feel like you've just walked into a level of tony hawks So in our girls, we always work from dark to light. So we kind of want to start incorporating that in the background as well. So with a nice base tone, then with the whitewashing, you can bring out highlights in it. And we also like now to work with more light of where she is and add more tones and more shadows. So it's just layers, layers and stencils and layers in background. If you don't push yourself, you just do the same shit all the time. So that's what we're trying to do, push ourselves. <laughs> Every artist is doing nine meter by five canvas or five by five meter canvas, like big fucking in-store canvases. But it really, it's essentially the same as painting a wall. There's no difference to it. It's just that it's a little bit more controlled environment, which is not the worst thing. But I think everyone has a lot more freedom on this scale to really do what I think street artists and muralists are more natural towards, which is painting bigger pieces. You can be a lot more loose. You can spend a lot more time drilling in the details. I think a lot of people are going to be more at home doing pieces this size for a museum than they are doing studio campuses and stuff. So I'm sitting just now in a giant Lego block, which is also the street art today, HQ, and I'm joined with the director, Peter. Peter, thank you very much for having me in your lovely office. How long has this sort of been going on? And then have you set a date? For the opening? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, actually I said, I said many, many dates in the past already, but um, uh, as we started to build the museum, uh, I, I gave myself one year to, to, to build the collection and, and everything, which was kind of optimistic, but okay. Now we have to renovate the building which is taking place at the moment and I hope in one year time we will be able to open the space. It's, the space is twice as big as the turbine hall from Tate Modern so you can imagine that, that, is, that is something and it's an old industrial space and it's a former shipyard warehouse uh, with all the old cranes inside and it's, it's one big box, huge, huge and full of potential. How many artists have you managed to acquire? How many do you plan on acquiring? Is this going to just continue to grow? How, how have they all kind of come, come together? Yeah, I think today uh, more than 120, 130 artists already participated uh, in, in the past two and a half years. There's room for more, but I have an endless, well, not endless, but a really big wish list of yeah. artists that I still want to invite. 
And that's an ongoing process and it will be uh, ongoing all, even after we open. So can you tell us about this technique that you're My new abstract engaged in? style. Uh, chicken scratching. So what's chicken scratching? So I saw Avoca do it when he was in London a couple of years ago. It gives you something to work with already that is, it's not just a blank canvas, you know, a lot of these marks end up becoming a part of the final piece. So it just gives you something a bit more dynamic to work with from the off. Um, so yeah, just random marks, random big marks, photograph it, and then in Photoshop kind of overlay the image uh, transparency-wise, and just gives you something nice to start with. Uh, I find the grid a little too rigid. I am not in a mood for thinking today. That's the beautiful thing. Like my brain right now trying to do a grid will just not work. This, this, says everything about my mental state today, basically. Random mess. Yeah. And what are you painting? You and your big ears. So that's my time here in Amsterdam, almost coming to an end. I must say the last couple of days have been non-stop but they've been incredible. The, both the work that Snick and Ben Slow have put together for the museum is really top level and the museum itself is going to be such a huge landmark for the city when it does open. The NDSM region is well worth a visit. I would 100% recommend waiting till the summer to do it but when it is hot here you can tell that this area is going to absolutely bang. There's something so effortlessly cool about the way that the Dutch do things and well it doesn't look like there's going to be too much development here anytime soon you know it's going to come so i really do recommend checking out this area well it is still completely raw and authentic my name's doug this is fifth wall tv